Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome uh, to this uh, series of uh, the open air uh, um, training for uh, the uh, open access Irish National Monitor. Um, these uh, uh, meetings today will be a hands on training uh, to use uh, OpenORG, which is uh, a tool that OpenAir is offering to create uh, the affiliation. We will have uh, other two um, training uh, um, in May. One will be in uh, on OpenAPC, uh, which is a way to report uh, the cost of articles and book uh, that will be um, will help you to uh, also do a financial uh, cost analysis. Uh, then at the end of May, we will have a second OpenORG uh, um, webinar. And in that case, uh, we will uh, uh, go deeper in um, some parent-child uh, analysis. Uh, so today the trainers uh, are uh, Ivan and Martina, who are the service uh, um, managers uh, together with uh, uh, Boyan on the OpenORG services. But before giving uh, the floor to them, I will ask uh, Leonidas uh, to do a brief introduction. So the floor is yours, Leonidas. Thank you, Julia. Uh, also from my side, uh, welcome, welcome to all of you to this first OpenORG Sprint which is a, basically will be a hands-on training to the platform of OpenOrgs, which is a very important step in uh, the disambiguation of uh, your organization. is a very important step for the National Open Access Monitor of Ireland because uh, uh, this way, through the OpenOrgs platform, OpenAir uh, manages to let's say, to deduplicate all the different names and identifiers that uh, we collect from uh, the different data sources, uh, which expand from uh, several funders providing funding information about uh, the research products, European Commission and other data sources of cross uh, data site and um, uh, even uh, institutional repositories that might have uh, displayed differently the name of the institution. This uh, has been a challenging, uh, let's say, functionality, because uh, it needs uh, constantly someone to, to, to watch the process through the OpenOps platform. Of course, uh, from this part, we have made the initial disambiguation uh, for you in the OpenOx platform. Therefore, when you will go and see your the details of your institution, you will see uh, that we have already performed uh, several uh, the duplications from the different names of the organizations. So, uh, as I already said, the uh, OpenOx platform goal is to make the information more accessible and to help you find and recognize your organization. The process, where well, of course Ivan and Martina will go through all the details, will be, uh, it's a mix of uh, an automated and human curation process. Uh, the automating part is uh, for the OpenOx platform to create the suggestions for the duplication. The human part is for the curators to curate the information, to decide if these duplicates are indeed eligible as uh, duplicates for your institution, for your organization. And the third part is for the automatic process to create the representative, the duplicated organization. And I would also like to share with you two slides. You, uh, all of you have already been informed uh, on this uh, via email. Uh, first of all, is how to become a curator. It is need, you need to have an open air account where you can register for one at the link that we'll provide you in the slides. And on the first login at the OpenOx platform, 
by using this OpenAI account that you have created, you request to become a curator. And then the OpenOps team will process your request and grant you access. And then you will be able to create the information for, for your organization. And then additional information uh, for uh, the organizations, the RPOs that uh, might not be displayed until now in the National Open Access Monitor. We have identified uh, most of them. The issue that uh, they are not displayed in uh, in open air is because uh, the organization has not meaning uh, uh, do not have an uh, or have not stated in the survey or to us uh, error identifier. The error identifier is an, is an identifier for the organizations for research from organizations. Therefore, when we have such an issue, we advise the RPOs to register to get their ID and then inform us when they have the ROR, this ROR ID in order to incorporate them to into open air and into open orgs. So that's all from me. I will give the floor to Ivana and Martina. In just a second to share my screen. Do you see it? Yes, perfect. Okay, so let's start. Uh, thank you, Julia and Lamidas for the introduction. Uh, in this part of the presentation, we will go over a list of functionalities that will enable you a better understanding of the OpenOrgs platform itself, and also give you an idea of what you will be able to do. Uh, so uh, first, just to quickly introduce you to the Open Orcs Curation Board, uh, along with Martina and myself, uh, we are joined by Boyan, uh, and together the three of us are dedicated to assisting uh, with any inquiries you may have about Open Orcs. So please don't hesitate to contact any of us if you have questions. Uh, we're here to help, of course. Uh, and in the near future, we also plan to reach uh, out to you with uh, new materials for curation updates and more. Uh, okay, so before we start, if some of you still haven't done so already, here's a quick uh, guide to request access to become a, a curator. A curator, sorry. Uh, so to do this, as Lomita uh, said, head to the OpenOrgs website page uh, using the link provided. I sent it in the chat. Um, you can also use your institutional email to sign up. Um, so when you first click on this uh, button here, uh, a window like this will open and then you can sign in with Edgain, uh, choose the service from the list here, and then select countries you want to curate. In your case, it's Ireland. Uh, click on send request and my colleague Martina and I think Juan is here too, uh, they will grant you access during the first part of the session. So if, anything, if anyone has uh, any difficulties with signing in, just let us know in the chat and we will figure it out and give you access. Uh, and just to give you a quick overview, uh, OpenOrgs is essentially, sorry, OpenOrgs is essentially based on three main activity pillars. Um, the first one is an automated approach. Uh, we have an algorithm which detects a similarity between organizations and uh, it establishes this similarity in the database. Um, but this has to be accepted by the curator. So the second step uh, is the manual management of the duplicates. Uh, this enables curators to manage these duplicate suggestions by either uh, confirming or denying them, recognizing that some decisions can only be made uh, by humans. Then we have the third pillar, uh, which is metadata curation, in which the curators can enrich the quality of data and improve the findability of organizations uh, within the large space uh, of data OpenOr has developed. So as a data curator, you will be, you'll have an important role uh, in making sure all of the information we have uh, about Irish organizations is accurate and up to date. Uh, this includes things like uh, curating and enriching uh, org's metadata, resolving duplicates uh, that are suggested by the algorithm, and also adding them if needed. Uh, you will be able to establish uh, parent-child relationships between related orgs, which is something we will do on the next um, sprint. 
Um, and when new orgs are suggested, you'll be able to approve them. Uh, you will also be able to leave comments in the notes section of each organization, and if any conflicts arise, you will be able to resolve them. So today we will um, briefly go over all of the actions, but we will focus on more on the deed application part. And in the next sprint, we will focus more on enriching metadata, adding relations between orgs, etc. So let's dive uh, right in and see how it all works. Uh, when you first visit uh, OpenOrgs, uh, you will find different ways to look up organizations. You can search by either typing the name or just part of it, or you can browse by country or by the type of organization, uh, which helps you then find exactly what you're looking for. Uh, the main action uh, happens in the curation section. You can see it here. Uh, this is where all of the detailed work of uh, checking and correcting metadata is done. And under this curation menu, there is a tab labeled organizations with new duplicates. This is the part we will go over uh, today in the hands-on session. Uh, there are also two additional tabs for suggested organizations and also potential conflicts. OpenOrgs also lets you create um, new organizations and add them to the database. This is super important for uh, keeping the database complete and up to date, especially with new research organizations when they pop up and um, or, if, or if some were missed before. Okay, so start. let's start with the basics. Um, enriching metadata is a crucial task in open orgs, and it ensures that each organization's profile is informative and easy to find. Um, let's take a closer look at all of at the single org page. So this is a page you will see when you open an institution. Uh, at the at the top we see the name, and then we have an open orgs ID. You can see it here, but you can also see it in the link, uh, which we will show you a bit later. Then you have the creation and modification date, and also uh, the open air graph ID uh, with the link to the open air explore page um, of the organization where, where you can see uh, what has been done in the open uh, So, our general uh, tip uh, oh, sorry. Um, uh, as for the metadata available uh, for curation, um, we can see here four sets of data. Uh, the first one is the official name and a type. Uh, both of these are mandatory fields, as is the country, which is in the next set of um, data. Uh, what we, um, our general tip is that you try to ensure the data is uh, consistent. So when you add the name, we advise it to be the official name of the organization in English. Uh, as for the type, uh, sometimes these are not so straightforward to figure out, of course, but uh, tools like the EC flags you'll see here, uh, this button can help you because these flags are automatically imported from, imported from the European Commission website and can provide insight into an organization's type when there is ambiguity. The next set of data, as uh, I said, is a geographical location with the city, country, latitude, and longitude. Out of all of these, uh, only country is a mandatory field. Uh, then we have other names and identifiers. Uh, here you can add acronyms, aliases in different languages, a wide range of identifiers, and multiple URLs. We recommend using UTF-8 encoding for non-English characters to maintain accuracy and try to include information in English to make it globally accessible. Of course, that will not be a problem for you because you use English uh, as mandatory. So um, yeah, use the English version of the organization name as the main name and then include the name uh, in the national language as an alias if uh, there is one. As for the identifiers, uh, usually the algorithm picks them up along the way, uh, but sometimes we need to add them ourselves. So uh, this here on the right is the list of identifiers you can add. And here uh, below are the links where you can find uh, some of them. 
uh, this is the open org ID uh, in the link I thought I uh, talked about a bit earlier. Uh, the final set of data uh, we can complete involved relationships, as I said. Uh, here you can include parent-child relationships, meaning uh, you can add a superior and a subordinate uh, institution. We will go in details uh, about this uh, in the next sprint. Uh, so this essentially means that when an organization is designated as a child of another, all of its outputs are included in the parent's organization um, uh, production, which is visible on other open air portals. This is particularly beneficial for monitoring uh, the collective output of related entities, such as universities and their respective faculties and uh, departments. Uh, also, or can have more than one parent, uh, which is useful for uh, so called uh, hybrid cases. Um, Sorry. Open Orgs also allows for the establishment of multi-level relationships, such as a university to a faculty, and then faculty to a department if, there it, is, if it is there. Another useful tip uh, when uh, enriching metadata is to use the tabs notes and history. Uh, the notes tab allows uh, users to jot down important things to remember or, or take notice later. Uh, these notes can uh, oh, sorry, just a bit. Uh, these notes can um, allow users to uh, they can be particularly useful if multiple curators are working on a single country as they can leave notes uh, about the work that has been done. So uh, on the other hand, um, the history tab serves as a log of actions performed on the page, including the user who performed them and uh, other information. Um, this uh, tab is only accessible to national admins and allows them to track uh, how the page has been modified and by whom. So uh, to sum up, oops, sorry. Uh, enriching uh, metadata can be quite simple. Uh, the mandatory field include the name, type, and country. However, we highly recommend curating additional information, such as the city, URL, name of the organization in English, acronym, and more, as these details are crucial um, for identifying uh, different expressions of the same organization. And don't worry if it seems a bit overwhelming at first to complete all of the metadata. You can decide how much information you want uh, to enter based on the depth of your research. Um, uh, as mentioned earlier at the beginning, another task available to you uh, is to create uh, or add new organizations. If you are unable to locate a specific organization, uh, it is a simple process to create it by clicking on the Create menu and selecting a new org. Uh, the same rules and recommendations apply as an enriching and editing metadata. Uh, there are two main concepts to understand when we are talking about the approval. Uh, first, the suggested organization is one that has been submitted and is awaiting approval by a data curator. Once approved, it will receive an open OpenOrx ID. Um, and then an approved organization is one that has already been confirmed by a curator. It possesses a stable identifier in the form of the open OpenOrx ID, and its metadata fields can be enriched uh, and curated over time. Um, so to approve a new org, we have to check out the suggested organizations uh, tab where we can identify uh, organizations of awaiting confirmation. And to curate an organization, um, you can browse the list, select an organization you wish to curate, visit its single org page, uh, and reach the metadata, and then complete the approval process for the organization by simply clicking on the button located at the bottom of the page. Um, however, it is crucial to ensure that the same organization does not have more than uh, one open orgs ID. Therefore, an organization should only be approved after verifying that it doesn't already exist in the database. 
uh, multiple open ORS IDs uh, for the same organization will uh, result in a conflict. And finally, uh, duplicates, uh, which they in general not only clutter the research landscape, but also lead to potential misinformation and also confusion. So what exactly are they? Um, they are possible duplications of the same organization that must be resolved by the, by the data curator. They occur when an approved org is matched with a raw org, which is an external organization without an open org's ID sourced from platforms such as Corda or Roar, etc. Uh, there are basically two ways of curating duplicates. They may be suggested by the deduplication algorithm or added uh, by the user themselves on the single org page. And regarding the uh, automated part, uh, you can do the disambiguation in the curation menu under the organizations with new duplicates tab. Uh, there you will find any possible duplicates that have been detected by the automated system, and it's up to you to approve or reject them. Uh, when we open a specific organization, uh, a window will pop up. Uh, at the top, you will see the reg registered uh, or approved organization here. Um, and uh, below, you will see the duplicates, my arrows, ran away a bit, sorry. <laughs> uh, so as we now dive into the comparison, it's important to check the metadata of each entry. Uh, the small differences in the organization's name, uh, its geographical location, and the URL can be easy hints uh, to spot. So if you think uh, uh, the organizations are the same, uh, just click on the green check mark button. Mm. On the other hand, if you believe they are different, you can reject the suggested uh, identity by clicking on the red X here. So it's a simple process that involves just a few clicks. Uh, the blue question mark, uh, you can see it here. Um, it, it's here by default, and it actually indicates a duplicate that is yet to be curated by the curator. If you are still not sure if something is or is not a duplicate, you just leave it in blue. And when you're done, simply click on save changes and that's it, the work is done. Uh, in situations when um, you know there are duplicates in the database, but none have been spotted by the algorithm, there is an alternative uh, way of curating them and that is by manual entry. Uh, that's a task that can be resolved through the single org stage under the duplicates tab, where at the bottom you will see add button. And when you click on it, search bar appears, then you can search for duplicates, add them, resolve them following the same uh, procedure as before. Martina will show you all of this in the database a bit later. So um, uh, you can see here, this is how the resolution of duplicates affects uh, the example uh, for example, Open Air Explore. Uh, all of these versions you see here were one separate entities. And here we have merged them under the same uh, name and uh, the same identifiers. And conflicts, they arise uh, when an organization is approved more than once, uh, resulting in duplicate organizations with different IDs. Mm. It's worth noting that in such uh, that such situations are not very common. However, they can occur, uh, particularly when curators are required to curate extensive lists of research organizations. Uh, you know, mistakes happen, but fortunately there are ways to resolve this conflict. Uh, they can either be manually identified by the data curator if they realize such a mistake uh, has been made or detected by the system. In the latter case, uh, potential conflicts will be listed under the potential conflict section under the curation menu. So uh, basically this section is des designed to help users quickly identify and, sorry, uh, and assess these issues. The list itself is organized into groups. You can see them here. Um, th these are groups of conflicts identified by the algorithm. Each group is uh, accompanied by four buttons. 
uh, the add button allows you to include another conflict into the group. The blue button uh, opens a pop-up for manually resolving conflicts. Uh, by clicking the orange button, you merge all of the conflicts automatically without choosing the primary entry or deciding which organization's ID will be hidden. And then the red button um, signifies that all entries are distinct, effectively resolving the conflict itself. Uh, resolving conflicts requires, I would say, a careful comparison of the uh, conflicting entries. Uh, by examining the metadata, you can determine whether the entries represent the same organization. And if they do, you can choose uh, which organization will be the primary one, meaning its metadata will be prominently displayed. Uh, the other uh, becomes the secondary organization. So here I clicked on this one first and that one became the main organization. After choosing, we can simply merge them. Alternatively, uh, using the orange button uh, you've seen on the slide before, uh, merges all conflicts without allowing selection of a primary organization. The first one in the list automatically becomes the primary. As for the previous IDs, they will not be deleted, but hidden, ensuring they no longer appear on the open air portals, but are still accessible for tracking purposes. Uh, if we conclude that the orgs in the group are all different because they have different names or they have different locations, in such cases, clicking the all different button uh, resolves the conflict. All right, so we've covered most of the main activities that users can do, but let's do a quick wrap up. So uh, just a reminder that you can perform a simple search by using part of the organization's name. Under the curation menu, there are three lists where you can find all of the basic activities. The suggested organizations list shows organizations that still need approval uh, from the national admin. The organization with new duplicates list is where you'll find any possible uh, duplicates that have been detected by the automated system. And then there's the potential conflicts list, which shows any conflicts detected by the algorithm. Okay, so before, sorry, I give the floor to Martina. Um, and uh, before we start with the, this application, um, actions. Uh, let me just show you where you can find some material that can help you with curation. So recently we uh, launched a brand new open OPS portal uh, and let's hop on it just to show you uh, what it offers. I won't go into too much detail about the portal but I wanted to show you the support tab uh, which can come in handy. Uh, so let's look at the supporting materials first. Here you will uh, find six tutorials covering different uh, aspects of curation in OpenOx, as well as video recordings and presentations from past uh, and previous webinars and sprints. Also our glossary section um, explains key terms uh, used throughout the service, making sure you have a solid understanding of our processes and objectives. Of course, there is a section with um, FAQs where you can find the answers to most of your questions. Uh, it is also important to note that the materials in this menu will be updated regularly. This is something that you know evolves over time and we plan on updating the uh, application itself. Um, so with that, new materials will come, probably new functionalities and terms, new questions will arise and so on. And with this, my part is over. <laughs> Martina, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> uh, can you just stop sharing oh, your yeah. screen? <laughs> it's fine. Here we go. Can you see my screen? I think you do. Yes, all good. Okay, thank you, Julia. Uh, okay, so, so as Ivana has said, I will show you the workflow that she was explaining inside the database before we move on to the hands-on part where you will be 
doing the do the do the the application uh process. Uh, when you enter, if you've uh, registered, if you register during uh, even a stock, I've already enabled you. But if you haven't, please do while I'm doing this, and then even I will uh, uh, enable you as a national admin. So this is the landing page. Uh, here you have the the search uh, input where you can uh, use the simple search, and then we'll move on to how to actually uh, curate and use the OpenORS database. Uh, first, I'll show you the how to uh, how to edit a, an organization that's already been um, approved. So for uh, you go under the search button and then you browse uh, by your country. Now I will sh I will browse for Croatia since we're from Croatia, but uh, and also since we're a super admins, we have all of the countries here, but uh, you will only have your country, Ireland, uh, shown uh, here. Uh, then you'll get something like this. Uh, so uh, this is the number of approved, suggested, uh, and suggested organizations, and then the raw and hidden uh, ones. When you click on the approved uh, uh, organizations, you'll get the list of all of the approved organizations. And we'll go on to one that uh, will edit. Uh, let me just find it. I forgot where it is. Oh, uh, so this is the University of OSIEC, the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Architecture. Uh, this is something I know that hasn't been edited uh, before. So uh, I even I had said so we. Uh, the name of the organization should be oh, English is your uh, language, but uh, we we say that the our name of the organization should be in English. And how we've um, done it here in Croatia is uh, put the name of the uh, university, and then the name of the faculty. So this is the University of Josip uh, Juraj Rosmer University of Osijek, the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Architecture. Um, the type of this organization is education. So you click on the uh, field and you get um, the, you get all of the types. So this is the education. This is an education uh, organization. Uh, then you can type in the uh, city where it is. This is in Osijek, and the countries are already uh, pre-filled uh, before. Uh, you can also put the latitude and longitude uh, here. Uh, next, we move on to other names and identifiers. So uh, first you have the acronym. Uh, if the organization has an acronym that uh, is known uh, to everyone uh, or an alias, uh, since this, since uh, our first uh, our mother uh, language is Croatian. I will put uh, the name of the organization in Croatian here. So I put uh, put it here and then I'll just uh, click uh, Croatian and then add it. Uh, so I have to click on the on the uh, cross to add it. If uh, if there is a if there is another uh, form of the of the name of the organization, you would also put it here. So for example, there's also the shorter version. I will also put it here. So uh, so I know that it has several uh, versions of the name. For identifiers, even I was mentioning, so here you put the identifiers that you know and can find about the organization. Uh, what I know about this and what I've found is the is the pick one uh just let me find it oh i cannot find it here okay uh, i'll i'll come back to this before after but uh, so you would uh you would copy you would paste the identifier here and then choose uh the type uh from here uh, depending on which 
identifier uh, you found. And then the URL, uh, so if uh, some organizations and even the approved ones already have the, uh, a URL here, so if if there is a URL here, you would uh, we su uh, we suggest that you check it, see if it's working and if it's the correct URL. And if there isn't one, uh, uh, you should definitely put one. So this is the URL uh, the, of this organization. So uh, I'll ju I just put it here, and we can check if it works. Uh, it should, yeah, it uh, it does work. So uh, this is. This is the URL here now. And then the last part on this first page is the relations. Uh, so if the organization is a parent or a child of another organization, this is where you put this is where you uh put this. So this is a since this is a faculty, so this is a child of another organization. And uh when you click when you click on this field. You get a pop-up window uh, where you can write uh, the name of the organization, and then click search. You'll get an you'll get a list. So you click on the organization that you want. Go down and click close. The important part is to click on this uh, button to add it. If you don't click on it, it won't be added and it you won't see the relation here after you've done this after you uh fill out filled out the all of the fields uh needed you click on uh save we'll click on save here uh next uh next you can uh you can go to the duplicates uh tab where if there are some uh, here we have two new ones. Uh, so uh, this is the this is where Ivana has shown you. This is the information about the current organization, and then the second part is the duplicates part. So this is where you decide if this is a duplicate of the organization that I'm um, curating or isn't. Uh, now I know that these uh, that these that I have here are. So I would I will just click uh, on the on the check mark. If the if it isn't, I would click the uh, red X. And uh, if you're not sure, you you can just leave it at the question mark and then come back later to it when you are sure. Uh, after I've clicked on the green check mark, I also have to click on save. Otherwise, uh, none of this will be. Uh, none of this will be seen after uh, later. Uh, also, another thing that you can do here in the duplicates tab, you can add, you can manually add a duplicate. Uh, you do this by clicking on the add button. Uh, now, if you, uh, I already know that there is a duplicate of this organization, so I will uh, I will write the name of the organization uh, so this is the uh, i will actually uh, so this is the faculty of civil engineering and, and architecture osiex and i know that this will find me a duplicate in the database if you don't know if there is one you can just uh, write the name of the organization and see if there is one and i'll and uh, we'll go in the uh, suggested organizations where you'll also be able to find and see if there are duplicates of uh, your organization. So once you've found one, uh, you also click on it, you'll see the selected, you click close, and then it it adds it here on the list of the duplicates. Uh, and all, and then again, you have to decide if, uh, if it is, or you have to click on the uh, green check mark so that it is a duplicate and, and then again, click save. If you don't do this, if you just click on the green check mark, but don't save, uh, once you go uh, to another page and then return here, uh, you won't be able to see it uh, here. So now it's added here on the list. It's not the last one, but it's uh, it's here. So, but it is in the list. 
Okay, uh, next would be the conflicts tab. Uh, here with, for this organization, we don't have one. Uh, the notes tab where you can write the notes if there are some, if you've had some uh, trouble with this or, or uh, you have uh, questions for someone else. Yeah, so uh, this is where you would write it. And then in the history, you can see what was uh, done to this organization. Uh, okay, then uh, this uh, next will go into the suggested organization. So you would go under curation and then uh, suggested organizations. Again, uh, what you would see here is just Ireland, but I will now find Croatia. So uh, this is uh, when you click on it, you'll get a list of all of the suggested organizations that you can either um, add as duplicates or uh, curate. So if uh, once you go through the list or you find an uh, organization that you want to curate, uh, first, uh, we suggest to to check if it hasn't if it uh, hasn't already been approved, and then if you're sure that it hasn't been approved before, then you would uh, curate it and then add it as a new organization. Uh, so, for example, we'll go through uh, both of these uh, scenarios. So this would be one. Uh, that I know that uh, already is an approved organization. So once I go in it, uh, it I won't uh, I won't click this approve as new organization, but I would go back to my approved list. So I have to go back to the approved list and uh, find the organization in a question. So this is the University of Split Arts Academy here. It's in creation, but uh, it's uh, so we've approved it in English. So you go to this um, to this uh, organization, and again, as we've done before, what uh, what we suggest is to copy this name so you're sure that this is the organization that you'll find when you're manually adding the duplicate. So uh, I've copied uh, I've copied this and I'll go in back to the organization that's already been approved that the organization I found is a duplicate of and click add then search it here I, I've pasted it and then search and then I have found the organization in question so I'll click on it and then again the green check mark and save and now the duplicates have been uh, updated. Uh, this one, so now the organization will be, will, uh, won't be in the suggested uh, list anymore uh, because I've added it as a duplicate of another organization. Uh, now, if if there if you find an organization that hasn't been approved before, so for example, uh, this one, uh, it's a, a faculty of law again at the University of Osijek. I've checked before, but we can check again. Um, so this this organization hasn't been uh, approved before. So there, this is the this is the university in question, and uh, we don't have a faculty of law uh, yet. So this, so we will approve this organization from this is uh, from the suggested list. Uh, again, we'll leave this um, as it is. Um, so U.S. Computer Stress Matter University of Osijek. This is the name of the university. Then a comma and then uh, the name of faculty, and that is Faculty of Law. Again, this is an educational uh, organization. It is situated in Osijek, and the country is Croatia. Now, this is this is uh, wrong because here it's supposed to be an acronym, so I will uh, delete this, um, and then 
under aliases, I will put the name in a, in a, in the creation language. Uh, and again, the shorter version. Uh, I will put it uh, here. Okay, now IDs, uh, unfortunately we don't have any IDs already here and I wasn't able to find one, uh, but when I do find one, I will put it uh, here. Now the URL, uh, so we'll copy it. Uh, we'll copy it here and then, oh no, not here. This is the identifier, the URL and then add it. Uh, I can check it again to see if it works. It does work, and then you can it can stay. And again, this is a child of uh, another organization uh, that will search for. When I find it, I click on it. It's selected, and then I have to click on the button to add it and then I can approve this as a new organization. Uh, once I've approved it, it gets the open orgs ID. You get, you can see when it was created, when it was last modified and the uh, graph ID as well. Uh, if there are any duplicates, it, you would see it here, conflicts again, notes and history. Uh, another, Another way to curate organization organizations is to go uh, to the duplicates list. So you go under curation and then organizations with new duplicates. Again, you would uh, only see your organization here, your country, not your organization. Uh, this is uh, this is how uh, it shows. So you have the name of the organization. Uh, the place and then the number of pending uh, duplicates. Uh, it's uh, and then when you click on the organization, you get the uh, duplicate page. It's the same one. Uh, it's the same as the tab one. It's just uh, diff it's just uh, this. Um, uh, you can only see the duplicates. So you have the the registered organization and all of the duplicates that uh, have already been either approved or uh, not, depending on whether they are a duplicate of the organization or uh, aren't. Now these, so this is the Creation Academy of Sciences and Art and the duplicates that we have here are again, Creation Academy of Sciences and Art. So I would click the uh, green check mark and save changes. Once I click the save changes, it disappears from the list and I no longer have any duplicates. It, now it's moved me to another country, but we won't be going uh, through uh, this. Uh, the last part is the conflict um, uh, list. So again, curation, potential conflict. Uh, I will go, um, uh, I will go, uh, unfortunately, or luckily for us, we don't have any conflicts in Croatia. So I will go in Ireland, uh, but I won't, uh, I won't be, uh, resolving them. Uh, uh, you can go later on and, uh, see this or, and resolve it. So as even I have said, um, the conflicts are uh, grouped uh, into groups of conflicts. The first group, we have two here. Uh, you have, there's an add button to add a conf, to add another conflict to the group. The result manually merge all and all different. If I click on merge all, it would just merge all the organizations and put the first one as the main organization. If I click all different, it would uh, resolve them as different organizations. And if I go on resolve manually, I get an I get a pop up window where I can select uh, either the first or the second organization as the main organization. So uh, if I click select, it uh, goes to the right hand side, and I see I can see that it's uh, now it's the main organization and the second one becomes a second organization. If there are uh, more than one, it would say second organization, one, two, three, and et cetera. Uh, 
Once I've done this, I can uh, click merge or all different, or I can reset if I've uh, done if I've if I've done it wrong and then do it again. But as I've said, we won't uh, resolve uh, this conflict uh, today. Uh, we can uh, you someone else uh, can do it instead of uh, me. Um, this is uh, this is the. This is all from the curating part. If there are any questions so far, uh, please do ask. If I've gone uh, too fast through something, uh, I can do it again. Or if you have any questions about the curation itself, uh, please ask. If there are no questions, I don't see any, I, I, I can't really see hands or if you have a question, you can just uh, start speaking. If there are no questions, uh, this is the part of the uh, training where uh, you go into the uh, open orgs a database and curate for yourself. And then maybe, and then if you, have any problems or questions, you can ask us. Even I don't know if you wanted to add something here. I'll stop sharing now. Yeah, I'll share with you uh, three, just a second. So uh, do you see the screen? Yeah. Yes. Uh, here is the list of things you can do. Uh, you can choose an organization to curate from the approved list. Here you have the, the pathway. Uh, you can also go to the duplicates list, which we beg you to do, and resolve uh, at least a few duplicated organizations. And then you can choose an organization from the suggested uh, list to approve. So if uh, at any point you have questions, please ask. And if uh, somebody uh, didn't register, uh, let us know in the chat and we'll uh, give you access. Um, yeah, the recording will be available on YouTube, but I'll also read it in chat uh, here. I think Julia said that uh, at the beginning. Uh, Daniel, I think I've just approved uh, you as a curator, so either uh, refresh the page or try uh, again. Uh, since this is being recorded now, I think Julia will send the link to you uh, to the YouTube uh, video after uh, to everyone who joined uh, today. So you will get uh, the link and the video uh, to your email. Yes. And Martina, I can put it on the IRL web page as well, so people can access it there. Great.
Uh, hi, sorry, can I ask a question here? Um, I was wondering, so if I go in and I see, for example, that there's uh, something here, a department in University of Galway, for example, um, and I say, oh, this should be a child of University of Galway, but I'm not actually in University of Galway, will they get a notification to say, hey, can you approve or reject this? Or am I approving it on their behalf? You know, if someone makes a mistake, that might be a problem. Um, or should we one. avoid? Uh, I'm asking: <laughs> uh, is the is the task that we're uh, asked to help with here to only do these things for our own? But it seems like I can go in and click on any of them. Uh, is the idea here that that we're trying to help each other and suggest it to each other? And if so, will they get a notification and say, hey, someone else added this? Is this actually correct? Um, they won't get a, not a notification, but yes, you've all been added as national admins and you can uh, you can edit all of the organizations. The, the idea is to curate the whole country. So if you know that something is correct, you can do it. If you're not really sure, either try searching and see what is the correct and then do it or just wait for someone else uh, to do it. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, uh, okay. Because, yeah, yeah. They, uh, they, I mean, if someone from that university uh, goes in, they in something has been uh, done uh, wrong, they can change it. They can erase, for example, the parent-child relation. That they can erase it. So that's not it's not a that big of a mistake. So okay. So basically, for my own organization, then I should sometimes go in and just check on the history to make sure there hasn't been anything wrong. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, you can check on the history and see who's done it. If something has been done wrong, you can maybe ask them uh, why they've done it that way or something like that. Yes. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Hi, this is Donna from University College Cork. I just wanted to ask, I see in the duplicates, like um, Leon has added, it looks like Finland, Academy of Finland and another number of places. And I'm just not sure, is that because we work with them or should they, is it just errors for me to change? Uh, if there is an organization from Finland, it's probably by mistake that if there's probably it's you know the, related uh, organ sorry it's uh, just under related organizations but the you know under duplicates and then it says related organization and i'm just there's province academy oh, of oh, finland you're, you're that your, part is a provenance your... oh. it means that the, the name comes sorry for uh, interrupting yep uh, no problem Martina, uh, the provenance is coming from uh that uh, suggested the duplicate is coming from uh, that funder. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, they could work with them, but they're not the same organization. No, it doesn't mean that mm -hmm. this is the organization yeah. that is a duplicate. It means that your organization mm -hmm. has which is uh, stated in the, in the left, in the first mm -hmm. column. Yes. Uh -huh. The name of the organ the related organization in the first column, which is University College Cork. Yeah. This one comes from the source of Academy of Finland. This is a mm -hmm. source, it's not the organization. Okay, not all yes. Academy of Finland no is a problem. duplicate to University College Cork. Okay.
Hi, um, this is uh, Jennifer here from the Department of the Environment, Climate and Communications. So I'm just looking at the entry from my organisation and I've made quite a lot of changes to it now. Um, I was just wondering about the identifiers. Um, I'm not really terribly experienced with working in this area. There's a number of identifiers in there. I'm just not sure how to check whether they're actually accurate or not. Um, so is there, are there kind of, do you have a list of like web links? I've been just Google searching for some of the things like Fundref, but I'm not sure it's bringing me to the right web pages. And so if you had some useful information on how to check those, that would be really helpful. Thanks. I can share you the few of the links of the uh, identifiers I've had here. Just a second. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Four of these. Do you need any more? I can check for uh, the rest of them. But these it's, are basically the most important one. Yeah. Yeah. There's one I have. So I have Fundref, OroOr, Grid, Wikidata, and OrgRef. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll save it. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so another question on uh, when you're adding uh, children, it doesn't seem, or maybe I'm missing it. Is there any way to list the all the child, like all the relations? If I'm in what, looking at one um, uh, organization or entity. Is there a way to list all the associated ones? Because otherwise I would never notice if someone added something as a child to my organization, because I can't see that from my own. Uh, you can see um, when you add uh, the, the organizations as children, you can see it uh, above the, oh, let me just let's, uh, show you here. Okay. Uh, do you see the database now or the presentation? Uh, the database, the database yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, whenever uh, there are children, you will see them listed uh, below the relations. Uh, you just have to uh, click on the green button when you add them and you will see it. So does that take a long time for it to show up? Because it's not showing up, the one I added. It mm. should It should add immediately. It should be immediately. Mm. May, yes, if you if you add it, it should be added immediately. Which organization were you curating? Mm, I, yeah. Maybe I didn't click. I'll try it again. Because yeah, maybe yeah, I didn't try click the save or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there's a you have to click both the the button to add it, the green button to add it, the green cross and save. 
And then yeah, it will be I think saved. the problem was there was no save when I was oh. first adding it. I'll have a look again and see. Uh, I'll I'll try and do it on another one and just see okay. here. Okay. Um, so plus, yeah, there's no. It, you can test it on any of them, but uh, of the new ones. But if you go into a new one and you want to add it, and you add, oh, this is a child of. You can click the plus, and it's adding it to the list. But the only button that's available on the bottom is approve as new organization. So uh, it looks to me like all the information you put in will be saved, but it's, it's not saved actually. So you have to first approve it and then re-enter all the information. <laughs> it's, it shouldn't be like that. Once you've entered the information and click approved, the information should all stay there. Yeah, it Let didn't me for me. It didn't Let for me. Let me check on the organization yeah. that I approved. Martina, do you want to show it? Should I stop sharing? Uh, yeah. I can I can show my screen, but it it's showing. So the organization that I approved before, if you remember it. So this is the Faculty of Law. I've I I haven't I haven't done anything to it uh, since. So it's it's all here, and now I have the save. I can do it again to check, but it should be it should be the working. The second one it worked for, but the first one it didn't work for. Maybe maybe I missed the plus button. Might might have been something like that, because now it's working for the second one I did. So it might be that okay. I didn't click the plus button. Maybe I because it looks like you've said that this is the relation, so that might be why. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it would be nice if, like, let's say you click approve as an organization, um, or even if you click save or something at the bottom, but you have something typed in where you haven't clicked the plus button. Might be nice yeah. if it just pops up and, like, warrants you you have put yeah. something. Did you forget to <laughs> click the plus button? That's probably what happened to me. Yeah. We'll write it down. down. It's a functionality. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> uh, Thanks for explaining. I, I got it. It worked now on the second one. So I think <laughs> I probably forgot to press the, the green plus there. It happened. It <laughs> happened to me before. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, first, the first few organizations I had to, I had to edit a few times until, <laughs> until I remember to click all of the buttons. So it saves everything. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it works now. I can see I can see it uh, listed, so that's great. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, it doesn't work for Daniel either. Did you figure it out in the meantime, or do you have uh, the problem still with the save button? No, there's no save button there. It's like the previous speaker said. There's a add new organization at the very button, very bottom. After you enter all the data and everything or the information. The only button at the end of the page is say or um, suggest new organization. Yes, because you were at the suggested organizations and you enriched the metadata, I suppose. So uh, you have to approve it. So that's correct. Yeah, you just have to approve it as a new organization. And that's that. Okay, yeah, so. just to explain to you what uh, my problem was, I thought the problem was that uh, it didn't save it because it only had the approve button, uh, but apparently the approve button also worked as a save yeah, button. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, the button yeah save button. but my yeah. uh, my problem, so it will save it if you have clicked the green plus next to everything mm -hmm. you added, because I filled in something in one field and like the field is filled out, but I hadn't clicked it green plus button next to the field. So if you click, click the uh, green plus button next to all the fields you've filled in, uh, the ones that have one, and then click the approve button, that worked for me. Great, thank you. I, I, yeah, I think as you suggested, that worked, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank great. You. So yeah, there's a different uh, difference between approved organizations and those who uh, were not approved yet. Yeah, so it basically and works the same, yeah, yeah. You'll know that you've added uh, the information once you have the red bin next to the info, so you can erase it. So then you'll know for sure that you've added the information, that you've clicked the green button, the uh, green cross. Thank you.
Um, sorry, can I ask again? Um, when it comes to choosing the type of, um, um, it just says type uh, for your organization, uh, where does that affect things? Is there some way in the graph? Because I was looking at the graph, it doesn't seem like you can search for organization type or is there something like that or? So uh, that is just one of the data that uh, the open air graph pulls from the other databases and um, repositories, but I don't think either that is shown somewhere. Maybe in the open air explorer when you uh, filter it. Just a second. I will check it and uh, get back to you. Anika, I will uh, check with my colleagues where it reflects exactly. Uh, as yeah. of now, we we can filter the open orgs by the institute by the types. So, just let me show you. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to yeah, yeah. figure out how important either, it is yeah. to get something exact. Because, <laughs> for example, there's no research option there, and there's no <laughs> consortium option either. Very limited. Yeah. Um. So that's Do you see the database now? Out. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, when you browse by type, these are the types that you see in the type section. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not sure if it reflects anywhere, honestly. But I will uh, check with my colleagues and I will uh, get back to you via email. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. okay, thanks.
Thank you. Good question, though. Uh, sorry, I have <laughs> more questions because uh, I'm clicking around and trying it. So uh, I hope that's a good thing. Um, so I found, for example, one in the list that uh, did needed curation uh, is Queen's University Belfast. So that's not actually in Ireland. That's part of the UK. Uh, so I figured I'd go into it and change the country. But since we're the only approved for Ireland, we can either only choose Ireland or unknown. Is there some way to like indicate that this is a different country shouldn't be part of Ireland? Uh, yeah, you can send it to us and we will do it. Just oh, okay. Say. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, at this moment, we talked about this, um, that there should be an option where you can, I guess, assign um, an org to another country, so it will be visible in there, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, do you want to yeah. do the email or uh, just you can send it, it in the chat, chat or email. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll this is it. the I think. Thank you. Um just write a note to it. Mm -hmm. I put in one more there that's also uh, UK because it's Northern Ireland. I know that's a bit messy <laughs> when I search for something. I know when I'm filtering and things from Ireland, I have to always look for Northern Ireland. <laughs> I'm assigning it to UK and I've just seen that one's also assigned to Finland, so yeah. <laughs>
Okay, so there's only a few of us left here. So I think we should wrap up. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach back to us and get in touch. You have the emails here. Uh, you will also get all of the presentations and recordings. And I think Aaron will put the link up on the page, right? Yeah, I'll do that. So thank you all for coming and curating with us. We'll see you at the next sprint in May, I think. And thank you, Martina and Ivana. That was really helpful. Thank you, Aaron. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye.